so that is the reason that I was having quite a nasty time. Uh, 2,000 miles into the race, we encountered this off the Grand Banks near America. So you have the Labrador Current coming down from the Arctic. That meets the Gulf Stream, which is warm water coming across. So you have a an area which gets very, very foggy. In that area, you also have icebergs that have come down from the Arctic. This year particularly, they had come a long way south. On top of that, we had that bit of weather, which, um, well, to anybody, whether you know about weather or not, looks kind of nasty, doesn't it? It doesn't look good. So we were approaching it from over here, um, and I was a lot further north, thankfully. A lot of my other competitors were further south, so got it on the nose, really. Thankfully, I decided that I was going to take a bit of a risk, stay north, go straight through the middle, and then ride it all the way down. And thankfully, it paid off. The center of the low wasn't quite as intense as they had forecast, and it meant that actually, even though it was probably windier than some people got, it was actually at a better angle. It's all about preserving the boat and making sure that you're at least risk. And actually, you know, 60 degrees off the wind is nicer than going dead upwind. Uh, so that wasn't very nice. And that's the result of it. We had lots of storms and lots of lots of... Sc I didn't take that picture. I, I wouldn't have gone outside if I'd seen the sky like that, to be honest. <laughs> So here's the fog. It's a Saturday morning, and as you can see when I came on deck this morning, there was pretty solid evidence that I'd arrived at uh, the banks of Newfoundland. You can see it by the fog, which is just unbelievable. <laughs> I've waited a long time to experience this, and finally, here I am. This means we are close to America. This also means that somewhere out here, in the 60 by 60 mile square that I'm in right now, there are approximately four icebergs. So you kind of have to keep a lookout, but it's, it's very difficult and I don't have any radar, so it's almost a little bit potluck. So there you go, nice little picture I took. Um, no radar, thick, thick fog, wind, which is very unusual when you have fog. So you're going along at about six knots. It's very foggy. In fact, that film that I took was probably a less foggy bit than, than, than we really had. I did actually film one very thick bit of fog, and it looked just like it was white. I mean, you couldn't see anything. And I spoke to my mum on the phone, and she said, Oh, Hannah, you, I've heard there are awful icebergs. <laughs> oh. Really, Mum, thanks. <laughs> she said, you must keep a lookout. I said, OK, good. I can't even see my bowsprit, you know, let alone any icebergs. So, uh, so that was a very scary time, actually. We had about 36 hours of very thick fog. And because I didn't have radar, I just had an echo, uh, um, a CME, which is, uh, it just scans the horizon. And if there's anything on the horizon, it beeps. It beeped constantly for 24 hours. I never saw anything, but it beeped all the time. So this is a chart that we got, and uh, the numbers indicate how many icebergs there are in that square, and each square represents a 60 by 60 mile area. So we set ourselves a very low waypoint uh, to try and come south of them, but obviously the icebergs come further south, and you know we're coming in like this, so occasionally you're scraping a square which has more icebergs in and, and some of the guys in bigger boats with better equipment on board took, took more risks um, but I wasn't in a position to take risks like that without radar on board and I didn't have radar because I couldn't afford it it was as simple as that so I said in that film the fog means we're close to America that fog means we've still got a thousand miles to go. I thought, woo, we're nearly there, we're at America. But no, you've still got a third of the race to go. And actually, after the storm, we then encountered some very, very light winds. And that last week really was some of the most painful sailing I've ever done. As this little very sad video clip will tell you. Oh, hello, is this going to work? No, it's not. Never mind. It's basically me moaning that there is no wind and I'm 75 miles from the finish and um, that my parents and, and my friends are in America waiting for me. And ultimately, it's saying that if I don't... If this is on a sat the Saturday night. If I don't 
arrive before 20 past seven local time on the Sunday morning, I miss the world record and there's no wind and I'm not going anywhere. It's very, very frustrating. But after a very painful night, a very slow night, I got there an hour outside the world record, but I got there in 20 days, 22 minutes, half the time that Sir Francis Chichester took when he did it in 1960. It was an absolutely amazing moment. It's something that I've tried to do once before and failed at. It's something that I've dreamed of since sitting behind a sewing machine in Anders's loft seven, eight, nine years ago, uh, dreaming that I could do this. And I did it. And World record or no world record, it didn't matter. I was the fourth boat across the line for a 35-footer. That's quite a good, good placing. Uh, I came second on my class in my class on corrected time, and uh, I wrote 25,000 words during my race, and that earned me the media prize. I'm not sure if it was based on qu qu uh, <laughs> quantity rather than quality, but. Uh, I won it, and it was an amazing reception when I got there. There are my parents, very, very proud, obviously. Um, oh, that's nothing. Oh, here we go. Yes, and of course, lots of things written about me, which was fantastic. And it was very nice to have the recognition. In fact, there was one person before the race that turned around to me and said, Hannah, you're a lovely person, I really, really like you, but I think you'd be better at shopping and shoes and socializing and going to parties. Why don't you just do that instead? He said, I'm really not sure you're cut out for this. Anyway, I beat him by two days. <laughs> anyway, so uh, there you go. Here's a picture of all the competitors. And that's me getting an award, which was very exciting. So there you are. That is my race. That is me to date. And this race finished in, oh, when was it? J J June last year. I then had a week in America. And I then turned around and sailed all the way home again on my own. Uh, a lot of people had their boats shipped back to the UK or back to Europe. Some people went on holiday and then got other people to take their boats back. But uh, I decided I had this opportunity and I wanted the opportunity to learn and be better at so solo sailing and single-handed sailing. So I took the opportunity, I sailed home, um, and by the time I got back to England, I'd spent 60,000 pounds. <laughs> I'd sailed 9,000 miles, I'd been away for two months, but it's the best experience of my life, and I would thoroughly recommend it to anybody. It's just an amazing experience, and one that gets me here every time I talk about it. So, does anyone have any questions? Yeah? What are you doing now? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm a PA. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I am still sailing a lot. Uh, money is very difficult at the moment uh, with the economy, especially in the UK. Some of our finest sailors are struggling to find money. So, um, I am talking about my experiences a lot, doing events like this a lot. Um, I am doing some, a lot of double-handed racing this year sailing with other people who own boats and have more money than I do, basically. <laughs> I thought I'd spend their money instead of mine. So um, I really ha I would love to go around the world one day. I mean, if this experience has taught me anything, it's that it's something I love doing and something I'm not bad at doing either. So I would very much like to. But, you know, I spent £60,000 in this race. To go around the world is, is a very, very different ball game. I was also telling Peter earlier that what I love about the Osta is the Corinthian spirit. You know, the diverse range of competitors you have, from people like me wanting to be professionals through to people that just want to get away from their wives. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so everyone has a different reason for being there, a different story, a different purpose. Um, and I think that's what makes it very special. I think the professional side of the sport sometimes loses that. So, yeah. Any other questions? What's your dream race? <gasps> dream race. Mm, probably the around and around the world race with stops. <laughs> Anything else? No. Well, thank you so much for having me today. It really means a lot. Thank you. Thank you.